So in this video, we're talking about the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. It's one of the most popular audio interfaces in the world. I'm gonna take you through its features, what all the buttons on the front panel do, what a preamp is and why you need a good one, and a few more bits as well, so stay tuned. How's it going guys? It's John Holt here with The Audio Journey, helping make music production accessible to all. And here on this channel, what I do is a variety of music production tutorials, mainly focused towards beginners and beyond. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then definitely consider subscribing. So firstly, if you're new to this, you might be thinking, what is an audio interface and why do I need one? It's a really good question. And one of the main reasons is that the microphones that we use in day-to-day -day recording uh, whether you're podcasting, recording bands, they use a type of connection called XLR, which looks just like this. And essentially that's not gonna plug into a computer. So you need a middleman, um, if I can call it that, between your microphone, the cable, and getting it into your computer. So that's primarily what an audio interface is gonna do. Secondly, to use the studio monitors like you see behind me here, they don't plug in directly to your computer either. So they also plug into an audio interface. We'll go through that when we're having a look at the 2i2. But yeah, they're the two main reasons, as well as higher audio quality, that you're gonna be looking to get an audio interface. So let's dive in and have a look at the front panel. Firstly, it's a two in, two out interface. So two inputs and two outputs. The two inputs are on the front just here, and you've got two options as to what you can plug into them. As I just mentioned, XLR cables are what microphones use, and these plug into the big circle bit here, just like so. So if I grab an XLR, pop that in there. That would be then recording that microphone through the audio interface into some software like Logic, Pro Tools, whatever you might be using. The second option is a jack cable, so a quarter inch jack or TRS cable, whatever you want to call it. Uh, basically a guitar cable that looks just like this. They also plug right into the center of this input, just like so. And that's typically used for either plugging in guitars, bass guitars, or something like a synthesizer. Now next to those inputs, you've got the gain knob, which basically allows you to turn up the volume of what's being recorded before it gets to the software. So if you're recording something really quiet on a microphone or some really like guitar playing that needs a bit of extra volume, then you can add it here. And the little light around this gain knob um, called the gain halo flashes green when it's got a good amount of signal going in so that you've got an idea that you're recording a good amount of level. Down here, you've got a switch that says line or inst. And basically what that means is, are you recording something that's quite loud, like a synthesizer or something that's relatively quiet, like a guitar? So the way I remember it is a guitar is an instrument um, and that's the setting that you wanna keep. Whereas a synthesizer, which is much louder, is gonna go onto the line input. And that just means that you're recording them at, at the right kind of level, the right impedances and stuff. And it's important to get right, but it's fairly easy to remember. Next up, we've got this 48V button here. Now this isn't plugged in at the moment, but when it is, you push this in and it turns red. I'll put a photo up on the screen now. There you go. So that's what it's gonna look like when it is plugged in via USB. Um, and essentially what that does is it provides power to a specific type of microphone called a condenser microphone. They require 48 volts of power or phantom power, as it's also called, uh, to work. It's just like plugging something into the wall that needs to be plugged in. That has to be turned on or you're not gonna get any audio through. There's another type of microphone called dynamic that doesn't need that, but condenser microphones do need that. So that's a good thing to remember. Next up, we've got this direct monitor switch just here, which you can turn between on and off. And when you've got the direct monitor switch off, what you'll be hearing is the audio coming from your computer. So it will be coming from Logic, Cubase, whatever you're using, or YouTube and iTunes, whatever you've got going there. Um, and you won't be hearing anything that's coming directly from these. Whereas if you turn on direct monitoring, then you're gonna be hearing all the same stuff. You're gonna still be hearing Logic, Cubase, whatever you've got coming from your computer but you're also gonna hear what's coming directly into here. So that could be you talking into a microphone, that could be you playing guitar, whatever it is, you're gonna hear that coming through the headphone port and these outputs, as well as all the software stuff that normally comes through there. Next up, we've got the monitor dial. And what that controls is the amount of volume 
that you're sending to these monitor outputs. And the monitor outputs are what I have plugged into these. And that's what monitor outputs are. These are studio monitors. That volume dial controls how loud they are so that you don't have to go around the back of those and turn them up and down, which would, which would be a pain to keep them even and whatnot. Next, we've got the headphone volume control, and that quite simply controls the volume of the headphones, which you plug into here. Now, the headphones that I use are these ones just here, and they have the same size plug as a guitar cable, which is a quarter inch. Um, so if you do have headphones that don't have that big a jack, you can get an adapter. I'll pop a link down in the description below of an Amazon link where you can pick them up for a couple of quid. That means that your headphones can plug into there. And that's one of the ways that you can listen back. If you don't have studio monitors, which I didn't have for years, a pair of headphones will do just fine, plug into the front. Now, one thing that I see people get wrong all the time is they plug in an audio interface, they start playing audio back from YouTube or Logic or wherever, and they can't hear any sound. And the reason is they haven't plugged anything in to either the headphone port or the monitor outputs. They've still got their speakers maybe that they've got connected directly to the PC or they've still got headphones plugged into the PC or they're just expecting to hear sound from the PC as they always have done. That's not the case. When you're using an audio interface, you have to have something plugged into either the headphone port or the monitor outputs or you're not going to hear anything. Next up, what is a preamp and why do you need a good one? It's a really good question. And essentially what a preamp does is it's kind of in the name, um, it's an amplifier. So when you plug a microphone in there, a microphone actually gives out a really quiet signal. So that needs to be amplified or made louder before it goes into your recording or you're not gonna hear it. The reason that you need a good one is because if you have cheap preamps that are maybe in an interface that's not quite as expensive, but you saw it as better value for money, essentially when you turn up this gain dial, so adding volume, which you have to do the majority of the time, that is gonna introduce noise to your signal. You're gonna hear background noise and it sounds fairly unprofessional. So um, especially if you're doing quieter recordings like acoustic guitar or vocal work, you're really gonna hear that noise. And it's the difference between a good preamp and a bad preamp. And you'll hear good preamps called clean preamps. And that just means that you can boost the signal without getting that nasty background noise. It's a cleaner signal. Now, connecting your Scarlett to your computer could not be easier. All you need is a USB-A to B cable. Now, USB-A is what you're used to seeing a USB cable look like. It's this type of connection. And then USB-B is a connector type that looks something like this. So you might have seen it in a printer or a scanner or some other equipment that you may have. That is the end that goes into the interface on the back just here where it says USB, goes into there. And then standard USB port in your computer, you're gonna plug that straight in and you're good to go. Now, if you're using a Mac, the Scarlett 2i2 is plug and play. So once you've plugged it in via USB, as I just showed you, you're good to go. You can then select it in your software and start using it. If you're using Windows, then you do need to install a driver, an ASIO or ASIO driver, which you may have heard of from other applications and then you'll be good to go. It's a really quick and simple process. I'll put a link down in the description below of where you can find those Windows USB drivers, the latest ones from Focusrite. Now, my last point on the USB connection side of things would be use the cable that comes with the Focusrite. If you try and use a longer one, you're gonna run into problems of sort of disconnections. That's not something you wanna be doing. Um, if you do need longer cables, if you need it to reach further, get the XLR cable to go longer because they can withstand longer stretches, whereas USB cables, just can't. And the other thing is try not to use a USB hub if you can help it. And if you do have to use one, make sure it's a powered USB hub because then the Scarlett is still gonna get the power that it needs and you're not gonna be susceptible to dropouts and things like that. Now you may or may not be aware that the first generation Scarlett interfaces had a little bit of a, an issue that was documented fairly heavily online. And that was an issue that the line inputs were clipping with some people recording guitar and bass into it. And what I mean by clipping is the input level getting too high and it distorting, which in a digital system like this just really doesn't sound nice. And this is an issue that was corrected in the second generation of Scarlett interfaces. The Scarlett 2i4, the next one up, has a pad on the input, which basically is a button like the 48V one that you can press that's next to the input. 
and it reduces the level by 20 dB. So if you were having that clipping issue, you could stick that on and you wouldn't be clipping anymore. That reduces the input level by 20 dB and you're good. On the 2i2, you didn't have that option. So some people were having trouble. You'll see about it online, but I can assure you that is rectified in the second generation. I've never had an issue with clipping and I've never heard of anyone having issues clipping their guitar inputs with the second generation Scarlett. So if you do use guitars and you know you've got particularly hot pickups, then I would say definitely go for either the 2i4 if you want to get a first gen or just go for the second gen. It's a, it's a much safer bet. And finally, one of the most common issues that especially Windows users come up against with the Scala interfaces is like crackly and glitchy audio when they're using it with something like Logic or Pro Tools, Cubase, whatever you're using. And there are a few things that you can do to try and combat that. I'll go through them really quickly right now. And the first one is you go into your audio settings and you raise the buffer size. I'll link up to a video on the card now as to why that's important. Um, but basically it just gives your compute or a bit more breathing space, a bit more CPU power to process everything, because if it doesn't have that, you get those glitches and crackles and pops. If you're on a Windows machine, it could be a little bit deeper than that. It could be that you need to optimize a few settings in your Windows machine just to make sure that that real-time audio is running smoothly. So I'll also link up a video in the description below of a video that Focusrite have done to show you how to go through and do that. It's really quick and simple. I'd highly recommend it. And that is the way out of some really sticky situations with that kind of stuff. So guys, there's going to be a link down in the description below that you can use to go through and buy a Scarlett 2i2 if you want to. I'll disclose now that it's an affiliate link. So if you do click and buy it, I get a small commission. It makes no difference to the price to you. But I just want to be completely upfront about that. And if you do want to support the channel in that way, then I really do appreciate it. But you, by no means you don't, you don't have to. I'm also gonna put a load of links down to videos from Focusrite that are really useful in terms of getting up and running with the 2i2 um, and the other Scala interfaces where you can find the drivers, where you can find getting started videos to completely get up and running with it. So if you do have any more questions at all, then drop them down in the description below this box and I'll be happy to go through and answer them for you. I've been John Holt with The Audio Journey. I really hope to see you guys again soon. Take care.